Welcome to another episode of I Call Top Bunk. We are here on location in Vista, California. Beautiful Vista. And we are in uh, Joey Bradford's studio, the Vibratorium. And, uh, you know, he's just, he's being gracious enough to let us uh, just hang out here all week and do podcasts, which is cool. And this episode is the gracious and ever talkative Cove Reber uh, from Salesin and Dead American. Uh, we have been friends for long time and he was just a joy to talk to yeah the best and he was very forthcoming and yeah we hope you guys enjoy the episode as much as we enjoy talking to him and uh, without further ado here's Cove Reaver We're in sales it, and We're didn't ready. do anything. You yeah. know what I mean? But there's a way to like, we could, you know, I think like showing behind the scenes of like us hanging out, shooting like the, the, the promo shots that we, that we just did. Mm -hmm. Like all of that stuff, like that's, that's like comedy gold, you know? Totally. But at the same time, it's like, even just showing little clips of it, making some cool little reel that's like a 15 second clip of all of us like smiling, having fun, like being goofy, laughing, like dude, people just hungry hippos. That stuff. They just They're like they just want to see it. Yeah, and and we're again, we're not like the best dudes. Like I'm, <laughs> like, uh, Michaela, our good our good friend and, and dead Americans, like, photog photographer manager. You yeah, know, yeah. like she helps out with everything like that. Like her and I, she'll attest to this. Like, you see these like TikTok clips and stuff, and like, I'm just not the guy who's like, "Hey guys, like, I used to be in this totally. band, and totally. then you know I'm in this band." Mm -hmm. And it's like, I'm not that dude. I'm not. You'll never be that guy. I'll never be that yeah. dude. I I I hate that. I hate like having to go post and I hate having to like sit and take the time to like write something out to describe it. Right. It's like, it's not genuine. No. It, yeah. That's contrived. That's, that's fascinating though, because I credit sales in as one of the, you guys were one of the first bands to ever live stream recording a record at Hurley yeah, uh, back dude, in the day. You the guys Hurley were utilizing was social so media. Yeah at the very dawn of what we now is are just regular everyday things but you guys were the first in in to my perspective to ever do that kind of stuff so that's wild that you're like well, i'm not really into that kind of stuff who who was driving that was it just a band like oh that sounds cool let's just do it no it that I, simple? I think well that was that was definitely chris driving the whole okay. thing like sao tv and oh, sao yeah, tv, yeah. SAO -TV and do you guys want to do a f stupid ass little intro real quick and then just keep going no, we're, we're gonna do an intro we could do an and intro we, afterwards we can bro. just say <laughs> i turned on the mics mid mid okay back to say back to we cotv were, we, we were con <laughs> we, we were in a conversation uh i think so i think chris chris was like the the brainchild of everything that was like how do we do do more and use the technology at our hands you yeah. know what i mean like he he definitely had that vision and i think at that time that it was like us and under oath that were doing anything of like significant value online right. like under oath was doing some pretty cool shit at the time. it was the early were. 2000s you didn't have as much at your disposal yeah, either. yeah. What, so it's a hard five? but it was a couple yeah 2000 2005 2006 it was just a couple of like creative dudes that were like all right how can we like figure this out and then how can like i saw what they did and how can we do you know in right, our own right. way and figure it out um so but yeah chris chris had that thought and then the whole second record we had intended to just do it ourselves and then that record was a mess but Dude, hurley was like in search of solid ground that yeah. fucking record slams i love that record yeah that what is it 12 out of 13 of that record are pretty tight um basically like at Hurley, Hurley was tight because, and the way that even we ran Hurley, the way that the band was like doing those sessions and like when to turn on the audio, when to turn off the audio, like mm -hmm. when to turn the video on, when to turn it off. Like it, what was really fun was like during that time, 
I had like this list and I still have everybody's emails. I should just shoot it out and see if like <laughs> people respond. Hey Probably. guys. But it was really like, well. we had this whole little like club of like people because there was a message board underneath yes, it. That's right. And it was like, you could, you, every time that you, you, you signed in, you had to use, uh, you like created a, a, a username. Yeah. But that username wasn't like saved. So mm. as soon as you were off, somebody could jump back on as you and be like, oh, I'm this guy still. And I'm still here talking. It was like really kind of 2004, like, I can, bro, yeah. it's so like early yeah. on. And so it became this thing where like I got everybody's emails. And so at like weird times, I would just be up listening to these songs and riffs that I'm like, how the fuck am I going to sing over this shit? And I would just get on and I'd send out these emails and I'd be like, I'm signed in under this. And so we'd jump on and there'd be like 30 of us at like four in the morning, just like wow. chatting up and like having a good time talking about like what's what's happened, what's right. happening tomorrow, you know, like all this shit. So we all, we just, we utilized like the internet and those at that time, we, we try to take advantage of it, but I don't, I don't even think, even if, even if they were to, to have continued that, it never would have become something that was like, like that, like mm -hmm. where we were like doing these types of TikTok type, type right. of videos. Cause that just wasn't us like that. That's a, you know, totally different thing. Totally different thing. Being a fly on yeah. the wall, watching you guys work and be a band yeah. is widely different than making a purpose content for consumption on cell phones. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, speaking of the social media aspect and utilizing technology, I want to rewind because I am so curious on how you sent in uh, presumably a demo tape yeah. or an audition tape and did you email first like what was the process of of so 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 Sayosin needs a singer how do you even hear about this like well how did that work back then so i i was there was a show that they were doing in in San Diego at Soma they were supposed to go on tour with like story of the year Mike Hem. wow and like a couple, there this was is a like couple 2004? more. Four? Four. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No. It, it, end of 2003. It was end of 2003. Because that's the tour that Anthony was like, see ya. Yeah, yeah. And and just halfway through his flights to California, just turned back around and went and and went back home. Um, <clears throat> so I think, <laughs> Yosef. Uh, so I think like, at that time, I knew that they had canceled that tour, but I didn't know why. Mm -hmm. And I didn't really care enough why to, like, look into it. And so about four months passed, and I'm sitting in my English class, and, and the kid next to me was like, you know that? I was, like, singing a melody, and he was like, you know that, that Anthony quit, right? And I was like, what? And he was like, yeah, Anthony quit. So I just... What? I raised my hand. I gotta go to the bathroom. I'm yeah, out of here. I went, I went no shit. straight up. I was like, hey, Ms. Erickson, that was her name. She was a kindergarten teacher before, like, for 20 years. And then she decided my junior year to teach seniors and juniors. So she would, like, wow. have nap time and shit. And we'd bring pillows. And she would just read, like, like uh, Hamlet to us and shit. It was like super weird. So it's kind of nice though. And it was That's super nice. nice to be yeah. right before lunch and then we just leave. But I just raised my hand and was like, I didn't bring anything to class. She was like, hey, you can go to the bathroom. Went to my car and then just bolted it off campus and like typed up an email to Bo and he responded pretty pretty quickly. So fucking, you just literally got on it. Like the second Oh yeah, you the heard. second I heard it, yeah. I was like, oh, psh, like game over. Like I know, I knew then that they were from orange county and i was like that's 40 minutes tops you were know, you in bands anywhere. uh up to this point were you singing on your own were you recording anything at that time like what oh, were you bro. up to what was your what was your day to day so i mean at that time it was just high school in high school my senior year it was like i was 18 the whole year or the, yeah my whole senior mm -hmm. year so i could just leave whenever i wanted to and right. they would always kind of harass you on the way out, like, what are you doing? And I'm like, I don't want to be here. I'm going to go and I'm going to go home, I'm I'm gonna yeah. go home yeah. dude. And they ended up, uh, I ended up like working a job, uh, like doing pizza, pizza delivery that year. And then um, I got into 
I missed so many classes that they were like, you can't miss any more than two classes. Whoa. And so I had to like finish my, my senior year, just like being very, uh, on top of it. And, um, but yeah, I was just not, I wasn't doing anything other than being in a band with Joey. Oh, what's you know, up? We were, like, in our... what? Joey Bradford from the Eustace yeah. here, ladies and gentlemen. Sorry. Yeah. Joey and I were in like a high school band, a little pop punk band called Mormon in the Middle. Mormon in the Middle. Yeah. Amazing. And, yeah. And it, uh, like, I, I look back on that band and realize like we, we had, we had really good sh song structure. So I knew like, I knew that I knew how to write a song and how to like, you phrasing, know, phrasing and, and verses, like, yeah. the choruses need to be like, you know, bigger than verses and you tell stories and verses. Yeah, and, the blueprint for how to do it. Yeah, I so knew, like, yeah. I, you know, growing up, we all grew up listening to like really good, well-written yeah, songs. I mean, just surrounded so, by yeah. it. Yeah. Southern California, right? Absolutely. So I mean, even his older brother, <laughs> Joey's older brother is like a legend to, you know, yeah. all of us. You touched yeah, on yeah. that last time we were here a little bit. Oh, so yeah. could you keep it down, dude? Dude. <laughs> Come on, bro. All right. So Mormon in the middle. That so Mormon like in the middle. Yeah, that was sent, that was my thing. Tape in. <laughs> but yeah, so <laughs> getting yeah. back to yeah. <laughs> getting back to Seos and basically like with with talking to Bo, Bo is like, no, I don't want to try out any more people in person. Like it's been a, a train wreck and it's not worth your time or mine. And I was like, no, it definitely is, but I'll send in a demo, send me your address. And so- Do you have instrumental tracks or something to sing to? No, I I played shitty acoustic it. guitar. I love it. Yeah, so I set up a microphone in a in a jar, like a shitty $50 the, the microphone. The Yeah, bro. <laughs> Into my dad's PC and recorded it on like Fruity Loops or some shit. And- Shout out the to whole Fruity time, Loops. <laughs> the fucking funniest part is like, <laughs> shout out to Fruity Loops for Dude, sure. still slam. The the whole the whole time I was like, it was like this with the acoustic and the hole, and me singing over <laughs> like this. It was a night. It was an absolute nightmare. Um, but I had like strep throat, but that's tonsillitis. That's a testament like to all how these things you were too. going for it, though, Bro, But I was just I like, mean, I have like... to do this now. You're not being because. Stopped. If I don't do it now, like somebody's gonna get in before right. me because, you know, we're we're in like the spot. Like there's fucking singers everywhere. You know, they'll find somebody. Um, and so I, I just sent it in, wrote my name, my first name, just Cove, and my phone number to my my family's landline. <laughs> and oh. and bro, yeah, dude, two thousand four. Yeah, so they they Hard called lining. me. They called me like. With like three months left of my How senior year. How long after you sent that in, they give you a call? Um, probably like a three weeks. So you just didn't two sleep. three weeks. So you're just just hanging out, just kind of waiting. I'm just hanging out, thinking like, th you know, there's no way. There's a stack of CDs, you know, sure. ahead of me, and I'm like, there's no way. You That's know? a good question though. Were they uh, keen honing in on anybody else? Like, were they shopping around and like landing on anybody else? Or was it like? I don't think they were landing on anybody else because they just didn't they didn't like they knew what they didn't want but they didn't know yeah it's like they just knew that, yeah yeah, yeah. Like, I, th I think when you when you if you're like trying to find that guy you're like immediately you're like all right first impression like was it cool to be around this person yeah yeah and you know sometimes you can weed people out a little bit quicker and i think that me being so young was like oh there's an opportunity here, you know, to mold this, to dude, mold like, this dude. He's yeah. not like annoying. He's like a, a good kid from a good, He's a good family. Mormon child. Yeah. A good yeah. little Mormon child. Yeah. Like, and it, uh, it, they called me like with three months left in my senior year and my mom, I'm like outside doing yard work or some shit. And my mom calls me and she goes, Hey, there's a guy named Chris on the phone. He says he's in a band called Seosin. And I like ran around my house just like screaming. Like Double, three two, times. Two like, fists in the air, no dude. Way. Yeah. It's like my yeah. moment, you know? <laughs> and I get to the phone and I'm all out of breath and shit. And I'm like, what's up, dude? He's like, are you just 
like running around your house. I was just like, meeting dude. I was like, no, dude, no, don't worry He's about like that. He's literally listening to you. Like, <laughs> yeah, what the hell? just freak out. Like, ah, I guess it goes yeah. around the house. But um, he was like, yeah, we want you to come up and, and try out. So I went up and like Joey was saying earlier, I was like dressed the wrong way. So Joey like tried to like fix me a little bit. <laughs> you know? the picture. What did you yeah. choose first though? Oh, bro. I was like a pop punk kid. I, 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 Hell yeah. Famous stars in the straps and like yellow card and like starting line okay. green and t-shirts. Where's the and problem? Shit. It sounds great. It's yeah. fantastic. Sounds fucking awesome. Yeah, that was definitely high school coat. I wore that yesterday, literally everything. Yeah. yeah. Bright colored t-shirts Amazing. and shit. Yeah. Out of control. And so Joey dressed my... you in So jo Joey dressed me like I don't know. He like threw me like a, a t-shirt with a collar on it, you know, with some some stripes on it or some shit. Oh yeah. And I had like a white belt <laughs> on, you know, just like my my uh my moon shoes, the Osiris moon shoes. The moon shoes, yeah, the bro. big ones wow. are like this wide. Yeah, yeah the huge yeah. ones. Yeah. Um <laughs> and so I went it... up and, and just like met them and tried out and so you guys, you yeah. actually jammed with them, like? Yeah, we did. We did, you know, the EP in in a practice space, and they were like, we were kind of hanging out and I'm all quiet in the corner, like, what the fuck is like, going on? Yeah. I thought Bo was Justin and Justin was Bo. Like, I didn't know who anybody you just, you in the didn't band know back was. Then. Like, I, there's no, there was no photos. There's Facebook no Facebook to yeah. log into, and like, you know, it was like what the dawn of MySpace. Yeah, it was, it was, it was bonkers. So it, I definitely uh i think just the whole overall vibe of that day it was like okay you know we'll we'll call you and then they they uh like the whole vibe was was cool it wasn't like it was definitely like nervous kid meeting like sure. some idols you know like they were all older you know like i people i would have looked up to as a, right. as a freshman in in high school, you know, going to battle with bands, being like the seniors rule that band ripped. And this wasn't band a garage time. band, obviously. They no. had, they they've been doing oh. stuff and they're, they're translating the name EP and they've been playing these exploded. crazy shows. Yeah, 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 exploded and and it just it like there was all this hype surrounding it, and so when I came in, it was definitely a learning experience as far as like how to and this is why i hate social media and why i i feel yeah. like sales would have never become that like cool TikTok band is because the the amount of like i don't want to say hate because it wasn't hate it was just like uh comments that made me question like am i really the guy mm. the amount of criticality this? like yeah. everyone's just being super critical of you yeah like hyper you don't know anything about that no, I don't no, know no, 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 that. No, no, no. No, no, no. no, no, no. It, it it was like it was nuts. So I didn't really pay attention too much to it because to me it was never like at the time, yeah, I'm feeling these crazy shoes. But it was never feeling sure. these sure. these crazy shoes to me. It was like I just need to go out there and like be me, you know? Like yeah. I got to do myself you were trying to be the best form. <laughs> yeah, you do. Right. You were, I got to myself. I mean, you yeah. were trying to be the best version of you. You weren't trying to copy what Anthony yeah, had done. Yeah, I love what Anthony of course, did, of but course. I knew and at that time, you know, as well as I do now, that I'm not that dude. Like, I don't have that dude's right. voice. Like, if, if he were sitting here saying all this same stuff, like, our tones are just... Di wildly different. Wildly different, yeah, know. you know? And, and so I knew that it was just about like, how do I showcase myself? And, and that took two years to complete when, with the first record being done. Like it, it took, it took a while to figure it out. So after, you know, by, by that out, you mean like, like finding like what my singing students, we call it like finding your true voice. Like people can sing, but it's like, what do I sound like and what should I sound like are two fucking completely different. Yeah, things. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, so it's, like, I, so I knew from seeing in a choir my my entire youth, my you know, in in, in a church, like I'll say it like this, like you're never gonna hear a whole choir of like like honky tonk, like. 
<laughs> voice. You know right. what I'm saying? Like if, if if you get like 50 country singers in a room and you're like, this is my choir. I need you guys to sing this song. It's not going to come out with that twang. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like yeah. their, their voices are going to be like more catered to being a choir, you know? And to me, right. that's like your true voice. That's, that's you just singing and, and, you know, making sure that you're sure. hitting certain yeah, harmonies yeah. and notes and, and you're not, you're not like performing, you know, a perform right. a performance is, and this is something that the first record taught me is like when you're, when you're recording, it's more about capturing the performance than it is like the vocal performance singing. For sure. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I'm, we're a rock and roll band. This is, you're not Mariah Carey. You know what I'm saying? Course, you're not yeah. trying to do these crazy vocal runs. There's a lot of wiggle room in rock, right? Bro. Like, yeah. It's, it's, there's a lot of wiggle room in, in rock and i feel like the performance is definitely the the key aspect but that that i knew i knew how to separate those two from the get-go yeah. from the get-go yeah. just because of like i think having that being in a choral band experience and, and then being in a band you like ooh, i can separate these two yeah i can sing like things. that and do these harmonies i've learned i've now learned how to sing these harmonies mm -hmm. and do right. these things now it's about performing that and do i perform the harmony or do i just like let the harmony be that like like okay. uh almost like a pad you know what i'm saying like there's there's a whole like yeah i don't know different different like a whole bunch of things that you could do vocally on 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 songs but that's not what we're talking about like, no i get what you mean the right yeah. tone the right timbre for yeah. like yeah. the the vocal structure you're trying to yeah i get yeah. it for sure so you you send this tape in they call you you jam I would love to get a sense of what was happening between that point and then the first the first record the first full length the beetle record like do you guys immediately start writing songs to just go out and play a bunch of shows to get you comfortable like what, no. what happens so there was like all these little tryouts that they made me do <laughs> so we did that first it was like cool you passed the like first vibe check come to Bo's studio next week and oh. and let's like you know record a song and i was like oh fuck it's like oh, fuck, so fuck, nervous fuck, 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 fuck. what do i do um but they they had a plan and you know the plan was we're gonna re-record this song that we did with anthony with you just to see how you sound see how it goes vocally you know and so it uh we did that song I passed that test and then they were like, all right, cool. So we got warp tour coming up and I was like oh. already planning on going, you know, like taking back Sundays playing of course, yellow cards playing like all, all of my favorite bands that I want to see are playing. And so I'm like, I get to play warp tour for like 14 days. Hell yeah. And, and so we go out on that. Little did I know, another sales and test, you know, can he hang on tour? Like, what's he like to be in a van with? Is Long he term. like arguably yeah. like the greatest test? Yeah, yeah. it's the yeah. biggest. It's literally Ooh. like the biggest test that you have to pass because y you get out there and you're like sweaty. It's it's 120 degrees. You're stuck in a van. There's no like cool nope. place to chill you smell how you how are you taking care of yourself you're hangry yeah you're hangry yeah. you're like broke hella ptsd right now yeah, you right. Know, it's, <laughs> yeah it, it 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 was definitely something that i look back on and i'm like i wish i could have sang the whole thing but having phil be the guy who was singing the entire set except for the song that we recorded for me was was like okay cool i get to take warp tour and i get to do what i've always wanted to do as a fan going to warp tour mm -hmm. i get to go stand stand side stage a lot of you dude and yeah. watch like all of my favorite bands and like learn how to become a singer because because <laughs> day one of of warp tour i go i've never i've never like played a show 
just oh holding a microphone and they were like they're like what <laughs> and i was like yeah dude i was like what do i do and they're like just jump in the crowd i was like all right that's what they said yeah they're just like jump in the barricade I love so it, the dude. whole time i'm like on the barricade in the barricade just like losing just my sending mind sending it the first time i love it though bro yeah it was it was it was a trip and that warp tour passing that like and the, what can year he this? do this this, this is, 20... is 2004 yeah and phil sneed from story of the year was yeah. filling on a vocals yeah phil was filling on a, on, on the vocals and and playing with story of the year and again like yeah. i'm going to see story of the year like watching yeah. dan like learning like all right how do i like act cool on stage just holding a microphone oh, dude, that guy's the am i gonna be like the flippy presence. flip guy yeah. like yeah. like dan or am i gonna be like the swinging guy or like what kind of guy am yeah. i gonna be who am i you know you kind of develop your own out. thing though like <laughs> I, I think, would agree. if I may say so, like you have this like cool like lumbering like stare thing that you do that I'm like, I fucking dig that. Like, no, you're just fucking locked in. Yeah, it, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, yeah. there's time. There's times where I'm like, dang, did I like come across like angry tonight? Because I'm not an. Angry I think people person. who probably haven't seen you think that, but people who like are avid sales and goers, they're like, he's just fucking, nah, classic he's fucking locked in, dude. <laughs> having a great time. Yeah. Yeah. The the. I think the that now like not to jump to now, but like like now it's it's like so much because so, so much time has passed it 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 feels more natural than it did back then, if if that makes any sense. Totally. Like it it just yeah it now now I'm like I think after learning and realizing stepping away from the music industry and being able to like sidelines for a while i can like look back and be like that was really really cool but because i wasn't able to like live within those moments that were happening because it was all happening so fast like yeah now i'm i'm able to like just relax and be like be I, I don't know be more more of myself i guess you know i think that was really a uh a moment in time yeah. for all of you guys um i remember we won a my former teeny tiny little band won a contest to play taste of chaos and you guys hell yes and the first year of taste of chaos you guys drove up and you joined the tour on the washington date no one knew how to pronounce your name no one knew how to <laughs> anything no. and i was side stage with bert from the used yeah and we were all passing a bottle of wine and we were watching this zeozen band we're not really <laughs> sure but you guys wrecked yeah. everybody you guys were mind-blowing i'm literally getting goosebumps thinking about that's the awesome. show right now <laughs> that's um awesome. but you guys did have a swagger and you guys had a confidence by then by 2005 we're skipping ahead a year but yeah um the full length what hadn't happened yet yeah so i think that was another year like what 2006 ish 2006 yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you guys beginning. were just touring a lot only oh, off the dude. eps like that's something only we said too EP. like yeah we had were seven fucking songs. losing so their minds your over like, was like the thing that we could go and see song. you yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was we only had seven songs to play it was it, like we would yeah. go out on and tour and once like once we started doing um i could tell barrier head was kind of like roughly already there yeah and so we started working on that song and that that song had like fuck, dude i have spools of just different variations of that song lyrically and melodically and just all the different demos like i would go up to bose track something new and then mm -hmm. get a new a new bounce and i would drive home listening to it the whole time put it on, on we're gonna spool. play those right now is that no. why <laughs> some of the ep versions of some of the songs are different than the actual full length uh secrets yeah, yeah, yeah secrets for example um because yeah. we would always as as a consumer and as a fan yeah. uh, we would always get these eps and then learn them religiously and then the full length would come out and then you would be different be, like, be oh different. shit be different like, wait what we did that yeah yeah that that was that was like okay <laughs> more sales and tests <laughs> the, it, it it like we could have just I think okay for the black EP we needed to put something out for for 2006 sure. Warp Tour. We had we didn't have any new music out. We needed to like mm -hmm. make some you know hard copies to sell yeah, at yeah. Warp Tour for five bucks. Um, 
So I think that's more of the purpose of the EPs. It was like, all right, we got these demos ready. Let's just see what see what people think of these these like demos that and, we got. And you were live the testing record. the music as well and kind of refining. Yeah, yeah we were we, we we were live testing one or two of them. Sure. You know, to see check you know, catch vibes and see what's up and be able to go back home and maybe play a headlining set with all of the demos that we yeah. have, you know, make a little bit more money to go into the studio with. Right. Um but that whole that whole time period was just uh like a blur because I'm 19 years old. We're all living together in an apartment in in Orange County. Wait, how many dudes in one apartment? Well, more than two. Yeah, five. Ooh. Two in each room. Holy each room shit. had a bathroom. Holy shit. There was five of us, and I wasn't there the whole time, but I was there a lot. And I had a little like nook in the corner by the heater, of which I like burned myself many, many times. Uh, that had just a, a pad on the ground that I'd sleep on. Um, and then Bo Bocan moved in from from Bless the Fall. Wow. He like moved in and slept on the couch. And so me and Bo had the living room to ourselves so there was six of us living there i think at one point there was like eight people living yeah, in this dude, house it was wild shit. wild times so we were we were getting stuff done but we didn't necessarily know who was going to produce it and who was going to like be able to be the referee like we all knew we needed a referee now you're talking That's about what, full length for the full length yeah we all knew like a referee is like literally the description that we used like we need somebody yeah. to referee this because so you guys there's had too signed many by this point. too many fucking yeah was, we signed we signed a capital um pretty much like right after i i joined right it was like all right we're literally meeting with the lat or we're li we're meeting with the last the last label and did you was capital and we took a meeting did you finish high school or did you just bounce oh i i finished high school i graduated okay. i pushed out a tear to miss Eric erickson for not doing any homework the whole year and was like <laughs> i worked so hard on my senior presentation because i failed my senior Shout presentation miss erickson, Bro, Ms. erickson was like you yeah. know what i have to basically give you like an a on all the homework you didn't turn in the whole year in order to pass you <sighs> okay and so wow. she just like, you know, pushed out a tear and she, yeah. So I graduated, but barely, barely. I, but it's time to go be, be in a band. Yeah. I, I didn't want to do anything else in high school. Like I didn't play sports, but I was friends with everybody and we would just go to shows and yeah. put on our, put on our own shows at like house par house parties. And like, we had this barn that we would go put on shows at in high school. It was fucking wild. It was That's so crazy. crazy. Barn shows, dude. Yeah. 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 I love barn shows. It was so epic. Um so you signed. So but yeah, you, so, so we you... signed we signed to to uh Capital. And it's time to work on the full length. Yeah. And you guys are working on what is still an incredible batch of songs. Um I've always wondered and wanted to ask you, do you remember the frame of mind you were in when you were writing some of these songs lyrically or recording? Is it is it a time machine or is it more like uh, so Anthony once told me he feels like he's covering someone else's songs because the early sales and stuff was so long ago. It doesn't seem like because he's so far yeah. removed from that person that he was then. Uh, I can totally understand that. And I think my perspective is slightly different. I don't think I don't I don't feel like it was somebody else. Um. I wouldn't describe it, it in that regard. Um, I think I remember more of the writing and recording process than I do the actual like touring. Cause we toured for two, two and a half years off of the first record. So yeah. the touring was just like, just like straight too, right? Go, yeah. go, yeah. go, 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 go. You know, it's like over 300 days of touring a year. Yeah. Ugh, bonkers. Yuck. So, we the 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 times that i the, the, i enjoy recording more than i enjoy playing shows playing shows is great there's no you can't there's, 
Mm -hmm. you, there's no way to describe it and there's no way to get that feeling doing anything there's else. There's such intrinsically different experiences though. Like, yeah. cause I'm with yeah. you. I love playing a show, but I love like getting with some dudes who love to make cool shit and be yeah. like, yo, we have a bunch of stupid ass ideas. That's going to make one great idea. Yep. And let's do it. Yeah. Let's go hard on these, totally. you know, and, and, and make it, make it something that is, it, it's like making a, a delicious stew, you know? <laughs> You don't want to be you don't want to be the like cook in the kitchen who's just throwing like too too much salt or too, too much, much salt is yeah. a bad thing. Yeah. But to your point though, if you're writing when you're writing for the first record, are you thinking of the live show and like okay, well, I, no. I, I got to do this? No, no, no. no or no, you're no. just completely focused in that moment and making the song the best that can be, uh, yeah. and you're going to concern yourself with what parts am I going to do live later? Facts. Yeah. Okay. I, literally, like, so that's an interesting question. Not to interrupt you because when I I'm in the studio or when we were in the studio i would have to think about that <laughs> vocally because exactly. yeah. i'm like oh shit, this sounds really cool but can we fucking do this live and i love that you didn't even think about that you're like no nope, yeah, this sounds no. phenomenal yeah i know you to and me just, to me like there's a massive difference between playing live and and what's on record the like, record you're capturing the best of that that's the painting right like that's yeah that's that's exactly that's the finished painting that that's the most beautiful version of this that you're ever gonna get yeah yeah you know what i mean like this is what this is what like none of my live performances are gonna carry in this like the weight that that first record did mm -hmm. you know what i mean like and that's you're creating a polished sound for the right. listener's ear like forever that's forever it's yeah. gonna live forever and that that to me is like in those moments, like, don't, if anything, like, why would you hold back? Like, unless it's called for, like, yeah. And that's, and that's where the referee part comes in. It's okay. like, you need, you need somebody who can see the end be, and the, the painting and help you paint it. So that's and, a good segue. So enter, enter guys, Howard Benson. Need, enter Howard. Yeah. So okay. we went, we went with Howard Benson and, Bo and I, and I didn't know this until like going into the studio, but Bo, Bo has like the biggest crush on Benson, Chris Lord Algae at that time. He was just like, oh, these are totally. the, the top, you know? And they so, were, and, they were at the top of their games at that bro, time. It like American idiot, three cheers for sweet, you know, like. Blindside silence. I will oh, yeah. go on record saying that, and that Bo said this, and I agree. That record is one of the best sounding records of all time. Agreed. Like that record You're right. is sonically, it like melted my brain when I saw Silence for the first, like the music video on a TV for the first time. I was like, "Who is this band? Are yeah. you kidding me?" Like. Yeah. I gotta figure out how and who and where. You Dude, know, that's it what happened. Maybe stoked. So, that's what happened when I was in California. I was like seventeen, visiting my brother. He lived in Orange County. That's what happened when you guys popped them. Because I was, I was hungover and I woke up. I was like, "What the fuck is that? Turn that up to a thousand. What the who the yeah. fuck are these guys? Yeah, yeah, yeah. like what? so relatable. Yeah, that I mean, this child is. So <laughs> with his soaring vocals, mm -hmm. it's all, that plucking black and white video. I was like. But you're what heavy without being metal. What the yeah. fuck is happening? And you here? had this crazy melody thing and like these, like it was such a unique thing. Like I'd never had that sandwich before. Like I want more. <laughs> yeah, dude. That's how I felt about translating that, you know, that whole EP totally. was like, I don't know why I love this so much. Dude, I'm, I don't think anybody did. They're like, what this, yeah. we don't know what this is. Yeah. Turn it up. Yeah. I, could, I was like, yeah. mom. <laughs> mom, <laughs> do you think this is a boy or a girl singing around now? <laughs> <laughs> it's a boy i could sing this high and i would sing stuff to her uh it it like that i don't know that whole time of just if my my like i don't know my the music that i was listening to leading up to writing the first record was just like i loved everything that was top 40 that sounded you know rock and roll as well as like the more um you know warp tour friendly pop punk bands 
was just like everything that I loved. And then it started to get a little heavier when Thrice came out. Totally. And when Seosin came out, I felt like more bands were like, okay, you can sing and still play these like heavy riffs and he like, yes. let's just go a little bit heavier than than what this is. Take all those yes. song structures and just push it into a heavier, a heavier. Uh, you guys definitely had the algorithm. Oh, dude, totally. like, Bo, Bo had the algorithm. On, he bro. landed on something special, dude. Yeah, Bo, Bo knew like with like where to place certain riffs and how to how to kind of. Dude, uniquely friend. like lift a riff yeah. and make it unique to his himself is it bo has yeah. a very cool way of like hearing things and, and the way he plays uh plays and writes riffs is is like very unique to him he's like the totally this, this is a weird comparison but he's like the chris martin of coldplay of fucking rock because chris martin like literally is they're so calculated they yeah. it's literally like an equation for the human ear like they, yeah they measure out the consonants, mm -hmm. the dissonance, the BPM, the fucking key, where to put those little riffs, yep. like how to have them metered. Like my friend and I used to sit down, Sean Tift, and get really baked and be mm -hmm. like, all right, we're going to play this song and write out like the times when this stuff happens. Oh, and wow. we're going to play this song and it yeah. would be like the same shit. I'm like, these dudes have a fucking formula. Yeah. These songs are complete, intrinsically different. Yeah. It, but they're like he the same. Yeah. Bo, Bo was just on a different level at at that time i i feel like um he he knew musically what what the band yeah should be and would be and and where it was going um that's so important to have that like driver of the ship because not a lot of bands these days have that they're everyone's co-writing for bands like there's a few totally. that are like yeah we just write all our own shit but, yeah like that's really rare these days well, I mean, at that time it was just pride. Like every, I feel like every yeah, dude was doing Ride that pride. at that time. So, yeah, for for us, it, it we were kind of unique in in that when Chris joined the band, Bo. I don't, I don't know. I, I by the time I joined the band, Chris had already like, um inserted himself into Bo's world sure so writing that record it became like i've got two guys that i've got to go work with you know like on Bo's songs i'm gonna go work with Bo, and we're gonna write songs and then i'm gonna go work with chris on chris's songs and and Bo would get chris's songs and then make them Bo wisem yeah Bo's <laughs> version Bo wisem <Wisenton>. yeah <laughs> um i never knew that i didn't know it was like two little yeah, i didn't either Different yeah. like warehouses of like hits that you guys would. Oh, yeah. Go just listen to the first two records. Like you can, you can definitely tell what. So songs when you joined, was. Chris wasn't really a part of it yet. Or? No, Chris was. Chris had already inserted himself yeah, in yeah, yeah. that world. They had already written like uh, oh, what became "Come Close," but was. Oh, dude, it was called. Uh, yes. Um, you know. I want right. to play a pair of fast or something. No. 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 Come close was an Anthony was an Anthony demo. Wait, uh, what? I didn't know that. Yeah, it's yeah. on. I remember. Oh, hold on. It's escaping me. We'll find it later. But I didn't know what you're talking about. It had, a, <laughs> it had a different intro. but It, it, was, has, like, it was slightly different. But, right. but that song was a Chris song. Huh. You know, like there's there's certain songs that, that even when I heard... Uh, <laughs> um. What's the newest record called? Fuck. What, Along Came a Shadow? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I'm the worst. I love it, though. Along, the, along the Shadow, right? Along the Shadow. Okay. When Along the Shadow came out, I, like, listening to that record for me was like, oh, there's a Chris song. There's a Chris part. There's That's a amazing. Part. Yeah. Yeah. I can kind of, like, pick out where, like, who wrote what, who inserted, who started the idea. Um, and I, I, I think that it's, fans like their their overall vibe when it's when it it's complete is mm -hmm. insane because it, it it doesn't they both ha they both come from these different worlds and different perspectives of um how to write songs and 
that again first record needed a referee in in that like we needed somebody to to help be like that's it you know stop stop that. move let's yeah we're we're all we've decided working that yeah we decided that's good move on yeah you know what i mean that's yes. so yes. integral in the process too to having somebody be like because if you're too close oh, to it, you're, like, you're in the band and you're too close. You for me, go at, at 19 years old, But what if we like, do this to it? No, it, no, it wasn't. I, I, I didn't feel in, in that place. I was not in that place. So you're I just was like, what do you guys want? Straight up. It was like, I would go do, I would go do demos and then I'd bring it back or Bo would bring it back, you know, and we'd all sit there and listen to it and it'd be like, nope. Like, damn. Okay. <laughs> Tomorrow we go Okey back dope. in and go... Sounds Back good. at it again. Um, but, you know, we needed somebody to, because there were so many nopes for me leading into the recording of that record, I needed somebody who was going to help be like, be like Howard was and just be like, it's finished. Leave it alone. <laughs> and kind of pumping you up a little <laughs> you know? bit. And, and, oh, dude, that guy, that guy hyped me up so hard. Yeah. Like, there were some times in the studio where it was like, it was like moments where where i needed i needed some like serious hype to get shit done yeah and luckily howard was was that guy because if if it wasn't him and and things that didn't happen the way that they did that record would have never been what it was yeah. Never been what it was. That's such a principal feature of a producer, though. You got it. It's like the coach who's like, you fucking sucked last Friday. Yeah. <laughs> and, like, you need to fucking right. step it up next yeah. week. Because he loves you <laughs> and he wants you to fucking crush. Yeah. But I think, I think for Howard knew and could see the dynamics just by working, you know, yeah. for as long as he had up until that point. And he right, was like, right. He kind of like hovered around me and was like played protector a little bit because there's times on that record where like you're not alone is the best example of all time like we had that song we didn't have we had it had everything but the bridge wow and musically it yeah. was done it was like we knew that the, there was going to be a bridge part but we needed these few parts to to know what the bridge was going to sound mm -hmm. like and so the day before we're supposed to to go in and start tracking that song, Bo and Chris go in one room, and I like lock myself in this closet that I I was sharing a room with Alex, and Alex had left, so it was me just living in this huge room with this giant closet. And so I locked myself in this closet and was like, "I'm gonna finish this song." So I ended up writing the first verse and the chorus sent it to Howard um, or tried to send it to Howard but needed Bo's help so I couldn't <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't do it you like, trying to go behind it. enemy lines yeah. I was like how do I submit this without doing it so I called Howard and was like hey man I have this cool melody and stuff but I, 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 I've recorded it I can bring it in like super early before the studio or before we all show up to the studio I'll just like drive in early and give it to you he's like no just come in at like seven and let's just track what you have and see what's up wow and so everybody was like scheduled to come in at 9 30. i like, feel like you're like betraying them you're oh, like hell yeah, yeah dog i was like, like oh shit i'm cheating on straight up, i was yeah. like i felt like i was doing something super naughty terrible. Yeah. yeah so howard we finish it by like nine the band gets in it i leave go get coffee whatever kind of disappear for a second yeah. show up a little bit later you know and uh howard stayed in his little room and just like edited what we had done and the band got there they were sitting in there i get there everybody's like what's up like, where'd crazy. you go this morning like oh dude i just want to get coffee and sat in Starbucks <laughs> or whatever. you know just fuck it off and uh howard goes all right you guys ready and i'm like you're All right, here fucking we go. sweating bullets. <laughs> sweating bullets, yeah. dude. We go into this like little little control room and he's like he's like, All right, so what do you guys got for this You're Not Alone song? 
and like Bo like pulls out his laptop and like turns it around and, and he, you can see all the files and shit up on his computer and I'm like, they're gonna notice. They're gonna notice everything. Didn't notice. And <laughs> he goes, he goes, Well, actually I don't need to hear it. Here's your song. And he like turned like What? Hit, yeah, hit space bar. And you're it was just like you're like Again, one, but it was again one of those moments where I was like, I needed that. I needed that. I needed that like win and not not over them, just like for, for like, Yeah, it wasn't myself. about them. Yeah, yeah. It was, you know, yeah. it, and, and Howard gave me, like, that's what I'm talking about like, with, with, with Howard. It was like, he gave me that win and was just like, no, I don't need to hear your shit. Because this dude just wrote like... Your it's the fucking part. Song, it's the fucking part. You yeah. know, like, yeah. like this song is gonna sell you a million copies. That mm -hmm. that's literally what he said yep. to us. And and before anybody could fight it, he just kicked everybody out. And was like, Cove, get up in the booth. Let's get back to work on this song. So, which specific part did you and Howard work on? Is this the chorus? You said Ver uh, first verse. You said bridge too, or? Well, they needed the bridge. Uh, needed yeah, the bridge. so it was just, yeah, we needed the bridge, but it was the first verse and the chorus. Like, we had Bang through it. the end of the chorus. Because there's no there's no real, like, pre-chorus. I mean, there kind of is, but it was, that was right. already all, all worked out. And, yeah. So what did, what did dudes think when he was like, check out what They were did? just like, uh, where does this come from? And how, when did you do this? And, you know, it was like this. Like, mm -hmm. Yeah, I was just I gotta like... Go in my corner, like you know, I, I had this idea, fucking but come I in and wrote some it. smashing shit. Yeah, yeah. I mean, again, it's it. It just that whole that whole record was just like us fighting tooth and nail to make the best record in whatever way that we that but, we possibly. But I think you could. can hear that. And oh, absolutely. Whatever you break down, like I can hear it in the drums. I can yeah. hear the guitars. I can hear it in the vocals. Like I can hear it in the song structures. Like there is I never any of those songs, you never ever think, oh, that could have been that could have been yeah, way sicker. That was kind of yeah. lazy. That could have been way that sicker. Yeah. You don't have that factor with that so, that record. Yeah. So you get done with the record. You guys are done tracking. How what is the time gap between Okay, record's done, mm -hmm. and we have to leave to go play all these songs for a couple of years. Uh, not, it was pretty soon, uh, wasn't it? Like a month. Yeah, month okay. And, a half. Yuck, dude. and then you're just yeah. gone. Yeah, and it was gone. Uh, I <laughs> I'd gained so much weight that I didn't fit in any of my pants because we were all in sweats the whole time <laughs> filming and, and recording this record. Because <laughs> Howard Benson was in sweats the whole time. We were like, well, if he's going to be in sweats, then I'm going to be in sweats. Why am I yeah. wearing leg prisons? Yeah, dude. I'm going to so wear some. Chris gave me one pair of pants. I turned it and turned them into shorts, and I wore those for like a week, like 10 days on Warped Tour, and then I was back into all my sweats. Oof. Yeah, yeah all my, sure. Well, not my sweats, back into all my other pants because I was sweating so much. I had lost Water so weight. much weight just well, like let's go. immediately. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, it was, it was like Im immediate. It was gone. And then... And you're basically touring for... For two and a half years. I, I would come home for like 10 days... A week here i think the longest that we had off in like two years was like a month maybe 40 days like it was it was bonkers that whole time so you go from having never played a show to joining a favorite beloved band of yours like you were yeah. a fan before yeah. Fav my favorite band at that time you then go from that to tour touring recording mm -hmm. a record and then back to touring more did you what was that adjustment when you would come home like was it just a Oh God, Relief, I'm just trying to catch like... my breath. Or was it you were young and just going, Woo Oh, it was it just call my call Joey and and be like, yo, come over to my house. <laughs> like like Unbelievable. Sleepovers, dude. We're hanging out for the next seven days. You're mine. Like we're just gonna go yeah. run amok, you know? Like Right. Uh it's on me, you know? Like we just I would obviously, you know, try to catch up. But there was so little time and everybody's lives were just like happening. Right. You know, right. that like you would try to get you would try to get in as many hangs as you could, but the reality was just like I'm I'm gone, you know, like I'm just Yep. Forget about me and then when I get home, I'll call you. 
You know what totally. I'm saying? Like, don't don't stress about trying to reach out or anything like that. Like, I'm gone. I mean, yeah, know, I'm just I'm just doing this. So, um, it was it was a little it was a little I don't want to say like rough to adapt to it because everybody that I was friend like I was like friends with, I'm still friends with to this day. Right. And so I knew I knew who was going to stick around. You know what I mean? So the transition, so you go on tour, and then when when does the second record start happening as far as you're thinking about, that's time to start writing for a record, it's time to, like, what is that transition like going from huh. one extreme to another, right? So now you're touring for years on end, and now you come home, you have to make another record. How was that process different than what it was before? So now you have some confidence, presumably, like you've, you've done- Presumably. A, you've done a ton of shows at this point. Like yeah. you've played so many shows. I'm guessing you vocally kind of found yourself, uh, like you got comfortable with yourself vocally, maybe. Yeah. And then you, it's time to record a second record. How's that go? Spaghetti Not breakfast. The best. Were you spaghetti breakfast back oh, then? Spaghetti okay. breakfast. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, okay. So, two and a half years of touring, two years of touring, whatever it was. Our label fell apart. Yep. First single. Um, we didn't have anybody that, that we signed to. Everybody was gone. It was either go back and make a new record or tour this record into the ground, and we decided the latter. So we toured this record into the ground. And at the end of that cycle, sp spaghetti pasta yeah. brains. Um, at the end of that cycle, <sighs> things things uh were said that didn't need to be said and my life like pretty changed pretty dramatically at at the end of that cycle um can we get into that i mean it, it now now looking back it's <laughs> like oh i was just a a young kid who didn't know how to like sure talk through it i didn't i didn't know you don't have those tools yet yeah I, I i was like still learning these dudes that i was with you know right. and like a a big part of the difference between um like there was a lot of differences between us and i think at that time it was like sole focus on those differences and I think there was a lot of toxicity that was like sure. happening because we were also like, you know, tour. Oh, yeah. you, you tour for two years, you tour for like six weeks, bro. And you're on, you're in a van together. Of you're course. Married, even you're like, married to those people. You have a relationship with bro. all those fucking people. And you, you're not married up? to those people. Yes, exactly. You're like, you're like living on top of those people. 100%. Like you're, you're, they, my sweat is your sweat. Like that, it just, there is no, right. there is no individual sweat. Right. It's, it's now our sweat. I think I saw all of your poop. <laughs> it's bro. All my band members poops. Like oh, that's yeah. how you see you yeah. all oh, of yeah. it. All of it. And so it just, I think, uh, at that time again, it was like, I was, I was writing probably the biggest high that we like, cause we, we were finishing this tour or that cycle on like one of the biggest tours we had ever You guys done. did insane things on that album cycle oh dude insane the, things the, and the numbers are yeah it, it was, it's you, wild the accomplishments are yeah. crazy uh but you also don't have the advantage of you know your band members you don't you, you didn't grow up with them you haven't known them since you were no. five right so there is that uh what i like to call like they're your work buddies or you're they're your not not extended family but it, it's in the way of like the siblings they argue there's a push pull thing there, there, yeah right? i looked at him more as as like my older brothers yeah you know as the older brothers that i never had so to hear some of the things that were said to me in in or were said in the conversation right i i like just like blacked out just you know sure and and that f from like that point on it was just like what do i do 
you know and like, you were like i'm gonna get dreadlocks that's what i'm gonna do i'm just gonna do this yeah. to everybody and there's nowhere to go i know what you mean like you there's like well where the fuck i turn around you get wall, mad like, well yeah i just i i got mad but i also was like i was like you know at, at the same time trying to figure out how to deal with it all and clearly not dealing with it properly like i i like hid if you if you were a Sayosin fan and you saw me leading uh, like like at any point on that record cycle it was like i'm there hanging from like the time i get to the venue to the time that i either have to leave the venue or you get so tired that you leave right you know what i'm saying like that was my mentality and that's been my mentality for touring and so my men my who I was at the time changed and I just like stopped hanging out. I wouldn't hang out as much. Disconnected. I just kind of like disconnected from everything. And, you know, we had a tour, a couple tours after that, you know, not, you know, the, the gray EP. Yep. So we did like the same type yep. of thing. We toured the gray EP, see what people thought. And if you listen to Seosin LP one, my whole, my whole thought process for that record was like you have everybody in the genre doing this like no hope all hope is gone you know downtrodden. angry downtrodden yeah. and my whole thought process for that record i was like i'm not that dude i'm a happy positive dude you know and i don't want to a i'm not going to swear on this record because my mom will kill me and you know i i want to write a record that is hopeful and i want to tour when i tour that record and i tour with them i want to make sure that i'm doing things for the fan that my favorite singers did for me or my favorite bands Hell did for yeah. me yeah you know That's and you know, if I didn't meet a singer, I'd be like, I'm going to do the opposite of what that guy did. Up, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so I made myself accessible. And then if you listen to In Search of Solid Ground, hence the whole like, what am I doing yeah. with my life and with this? Where is this going? Who am I? Um, it was more, it was less hopeful. It was more like, that's where you're at. Stories of yeah. like my life and situations that I like didn't feel were right. So on my own, you know, the whole chorus, can I make it on my own? Like, right. I'm literally questioning if I can just like leave this shit and like make it on my own. Right. You know, like it's, it's very like. Oh, that's interesting. I never thought about that literally. Like, yeah, I tried so hard. I even tried my so least hard. favorite song that Seosin has ever put out is like it fits in this whole right, like right. perspective that I had of like the whole you know when the clock came about I was like perfect yeah. like time's running out and it's just it is what it is you know like I knew it I knew what was gonna happen right. I just didn't know how it was gonna happen that's and a good so, insight in like lyrically into that record I'm gonna go re-listen to that. That record, that Dude, record, is that fucker all the really time. Really deep, so, bro. Like it's so yeah. good. It's so like. Best of me is like one of my favorite sales and songs <clears> ever. Yeah, that I love I love that song. That song. Uh, Fireflies is yes. one of those songs where it was like, again, I said it after the departure. It was like if there's a way that I could leave a band, it would be with Fireflies. Yeah. Like that. That if that's the last thing that anybody heard from me and Sayosin fine with that yeah you know what i mean um so i i kind of like i feel like they saw it coming through that record i saw it coming through that record but it was just like let's see they how saw it, it coming through you said or no i i, I feel like they had to because i was known, more like, like if you're serving up those lyrics bro, i like, was way more like yeah up like just when I go to Buzz, I'd be like, I don't care that I'm singing this in front of you, like in my head. It's so like, beautiful about that, though. Yeah, it, it's, yeah. It's, totally. it's very exposing, and I, I would just kind of express I mean, myself the, to them through that. That's and the fucking like, purpose of creating yeah. shit, though. Like, it was hard, though. It was hard because it was, it was 
I didn't want it to be that way. I wanted it to be more like, because I was being more like, uh, or less ambiguous and just more straight to the point. Mm -hmm. I was hoping, I guess, that there would be like some type of just anything uh, conversational, you know, that could have just yeah. been that Howard type of situation where it was like one of you guys just stood up, you know, stood up for me type thing or made me feel like that. Um, but yeah, it, 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 that record is fire. Like, yeah. we talk about it all. Like, yes. we, is yes, it we real? Do. All the time on tour. Dude, that is the most underrated <laughs> fucking the drives, We would, that's yeah. the record we would bump. Just from yeah. top to bottom, we like, just run the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah, I I love that song. I I thought off of that record, and I f I fought like hell, and I'm so glad that it, that record ended the way that it did because I fought like hell for "Why Can't You See" to yes. be the first single off that record, and I loved that song. I thought that 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 song was like one of the more catchy like. Seos and songs that that had ever been written because mm -hmm. it was just so just a cruise perfect cruiser <laughs> um and less like it was out out of the box because it didn't have the the riffy the cool guys, riffy, yeah. but it was just like all right cool we can move it in this direction and then it was like all right Seosin is officially redheaded stepchildren of virgin records because right. we're the adopted child right. from Capital. So it just became this like weird just butt heads of like, you don't have the single yet. You don't have the single yet. Do you think just, there were so many singles? Yeah, it was so many singles. It was all singles. Yeah. It was so good. They were just they were just longer songs. Like we just took yeah. more liberties yeah. in the songwriting department, in like the song structure department rather. And did things that were more for that like potentially for the live the live show dude it was you know? I, yeah trajectory wise i think it was like a perfect articulation for yeah. you guys like yeah. a couple little riffy songs in there but like you're saying like little cruisers yeah all of them are like that where it's just yeah. like yeah the whole way through do you think looking back now your your feelings and how you felt about the entire situation was exacerbated by the go 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 nature of the entire industry at that time of because clearly you guys were still feeling some kind of pressure to okay we got to go to this record now we got to go back out on the road and play all these shows and stuff like that what if you were able to have just taken a break at that time Take i thought time. i was so i thought we were i thought after that whole cycle we were just going to come home i was going to do the same thing that we did you know when we when we come home take a month yeah you don't I, see I, anybody talk to anybody and then you I'm reconvene. not talking to you until totally. I, I like have to see you the day before we leave for practice like i don't right. need to see you totally. i don't need your sweat on me i don't need your scent on me yeah i'm just gonna go home and i want to be excited to come back and like see you again and I, I need to like miss you you need to create that longing yeah yeah yeah, and I think every every band kind of needs that, especially if you tour as hard and nasty as they have toured. But you know, uh, the the thing about it is like, um, we we kind of like made it harder on ourselves in ways, and it didn't need to be it didn't need to be so difficult you know like uh i am a singer and so my piece of gear and my knowledge of stuff is insignificant i i mm -hmm. carry a microphone right my, my whole purpose is to live life and then write about lucky it. Fucking lucky. You know that's what I'm right. saying? Like that's that's right. That's literally. I don't play guitar. I don't write songs. You convert your I just, life experiences into things that into people things. can sing along. Yeah, sing along to. And so I need I need time like that to to yes. gather myself yes. because I just spent two years of my life solely focused on one that that first record, and I have lived 
a crazy experience. Mm -hmm. And yes, there's stuff to write about, but a band writing a song about being on the road all the time, like, <laughs> or a record about it, like, no, bro. Bon Jovi's already and just, done that. Yeah, or about <laughs> just like, yeah, that's just stupid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I needed the I needed more life experience. I felt like so I came, I came home off of the second record mm -hmm. being like i just need to like get seosin out of my head because anytime i think about it i think about the worst things totally it becomes you know? an overtly negative thing oh massively negative thing yeah. and you don't want to turn that into an evil thing so you're like no it didn't it, it was it was either going to on a third record or it was right. just gonna end in like the most gnarly fashion where yeah. like i just explode and become a person that i'm not yeah you know and then that just doesn't ever look good on on you don't want to put that out there no on, on the situation even potentially if there could be anything in the future like like i was <laughs> i would say it anytime they would ask like oh you know, if Cover to quit, who would do? Who would sing? You know, like it was kind of like this bit. Like I would just follow Anthony's suit for for you know what I'm right. saying, and and Bo is like I would, and I'd be like, no, the band would die, like it would either die or or Anthony has to come back, you know. Yeah. And so, I feel like, again, it it was it's kind of an acid trippy dream, Bo singing yeah. for Sayosin. Yeah. Right, but uh, he crushes yes. though. He's a great His, vocalist, bro. He's singing on all the new, the new like re Taylor's version of Sales and Self Title that we're retracking. Like singing, he's singing, singing harmonies. Like, yeah, he's always ripped the harmonies them. though, bro. Not you'd okay. no, it's gonna be save it. You'd I'm be stoked. surprised. You'd be surprised at how many harmonies were sung and who sang them. Like I love it's that. a big it's, setup. I'm still that's a big oh, nugget, bro. We we tracked for that Howard Benson record. We tracked so many vocals, like so many vocals. I would hit harmonies. Chris would come up. He'd hit harmonies. Bo would come up. He'd hit harmonies. And nobody knew what was happening because we'd all get in there. Right. Again, I I knew what I would like. Which I would do. Gonna land. Sort it like, later. But yeah. he would track me to then track Bo, Chris, and Justin, and it, the stacking and whose parts are what, like that record is just littered with all of our voices. You can hear the time beautiful. spent on all of those things Dude, though. Like so, that's, it's that's so what you're cool. hearing. That was the yeah. difference between that and anything else that was coming out at that time. So I know how, we're jumping around. Was Howard like not letting you guys know his process, like what was going on? He'd just be like, this is happening now. Bro, he-, he <laughs> Was it just like, Inspector Gadget. Go hit that harmony. Straight up. Yeah, he had he had, and at the end he'd be like Mike, spacebar, and you'd be like, oh, yeah. that's what we all just did. So he had it's straight. Yes. Really? Yeah. So what? I. It's so strange. We would do, we would do songs, and like after the first three drum, like three days, three songs of drums were done, Howard and I just bailed, and then it was just Mike and the four of mm -hmm. them doing music. And then anytime we get a new one or finish one, he would just cycle it wow. through. Wow! And so we would start. We would. It was like it was a factory, dude. It was That's just amazing. like this, this revolving door of like, all right, drums are done. Get it to the editor. We're already tracking vocals. Get it to the editor. Mm -hmm. Now we've got track. You know, edited We're just drums talking and about, vocals. It's like how Feldman does it, literally right. on the spot, dude. It's you, just like insane. Yeah, you just yeah. pass it along and then keep moving. Keep There's moving. There's something moving. to it. I mean, it it. It efficient. works and I it's efficient and I think I think the problem with Seos and at, and with a lot of artists is is finishing and getting like, it over the finish line getting over well just yeah getting over the finish line but but when it comes to music finishing the song finishing just yeah. finish just say that it's done like you have the recording process, you have the mixing process, yep. you have the mastering process. And some people go through 50 different mixers. That's just fucking You're right. musicians though, dude. Like people are- Bro, that's, you just- I know. For sure. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. That's but at what point are you going to be like, yo, the spaghetti's yeah. done. Yeah, it's done. We don't need done. another cheese. Yeah. You're not going to record anymore. Yeah. You're not going to do anything. Just 
pick a guy and go with it. And and that's that's I feel like a lot of people's problems and, and what took what took Sayosin so long uh, was like just finding that guy with with Howard Benson. And then even after that, it was just finishing it and having that like deadline and the we have the ability. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like Bo can record mix and master yes. in his garage. Very well, so. in his parents' yeah. garage. Yes, he doesn't need a thirty thousand or three hundred thousand dollar studio right. or a million and a half dollar studio in Malibu with a view to like track something that's going to sound e as good as good yeah, as yeah. something that's going to be side by side with it on the radio. You know what I'm saying? Sounds it just yeah. just get to that point, yes. and once it's done, be done, put it out, because you're gonna you're gonna either then you're gonna sit on it. And you're going to be like, oh, well, we got to like set it up, you know, and that's going to take time to figure out a music video of this and this right. and that. And it's like, if the mentality back then could have been that, and if we could have had the ability just to be like, you know what? I don't know what's best, but I like this enough just to say go. As a band, we wouldn't have had to have gotten to Howard and we probably would have put out five or six records right. since that time. Right. And I'm glad that we didn't <laughs> because I feel like I can look at it now and just be like, hell yeah. Like we're doing sick numbers. Yeah. Considering that like the band doesn't really do anything and hasn't really done anything of like, being a band of significance in a while. And if you don't want to do that, there's ways of still being a band and saying yes a few times. And I of feel course. like of course. that's kind of the position where the band is at right now is like, let's just say yes when it's appropriate. When it makes sense. To say yes for all of us. Yes. You know, we'll throw it, we'll throw it in the group text and check the calendar and make sure everybody's Google calendars are all perfect. Uh -huh. And if they line up, they line up. And if they don't, we just say no. That's you know so what simple. I mean? Uh, I think if, if that could have been the mentality at the time, um, it would have, like, it would have obviously boosted and there wouldn't, wouldn't have been as many problems, but just like getting to the finish line on a lot yeah. of things were at that time, we're just like so many roadblocks and road bumps and, and little things that, and big things that happen, you know, again, losing your label, like right. saying no to a melody is not as, as, uh, right. uh significant as, as that, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Or, um, just, just, there's just a lot of like weird little things that the, the music industry back then was like, um, At least in our case, being on a major record label, it was more like board meetings and got to have a plan and got to have assets and got to make sure that there's a six month timeline. You know what I mean? Right. Like they're putting bus ads out. Of course. You know what I mean? Of like, course. like if you're doing stuff like that, like you need a long time Big for ramp. marketing, you know? Long ramp. Yeah. So it, it just, uh, I don't know, like, I think it got to the point where I kind of at at the end I I didn't care about about it. I was just like, what am I gonna go do? Make write another song for for this record label, and I'm just like, whatever. And then everything kind of just like worked out where it was like clean separation. You know, oh, clean that's... separation on like the business side of things. Everything is just and, on the... and then on my Personal. side of things. And it was just like these nice little things that happen. And well, I was chef's like, kiss, yeah. all right. So how do you go from, so connect the dots for me. How do you go from what Sorry. you just said about like bus, bus ads yeah. and these major, major label, um, meeting rooms, and all that stuff. You take a whole bunch of time off and then you basically kind of go back to your roots with with that American and yeah. it's the polar opposite it couldn't be further from business wise at least like obviously you guys aren't on a major label but you also seem to operate it 
much differently than anything was operated back in the day as far as sales and goes and all that kind of stuff. And it seems way more, I don't know, not, I guess punk rock is the way I would describe it, but it's definitely more like, listen, we're going to do when we want to do it. And we're going to have a lot of, it's about having fun and getting that kind of, getting that kind of spark back, I guess is the way yeah. I would put it. Um, how do you get from, what is the process of getting from that and taking a break from all of that and it just parting ways and then getting it back into it again? So I, I stopped listening to music one for like seven years. I this just, is post separation. Yeah. Like... Literally the day that they came over, I like kind of stopped li listening to music. I like didn't was care. Was it a subconscious to... choice or were you just like, I've just got to disconnect from everything? I mean, I already like listening to like talk radio and like sure. podcasts yeah. were booming at that time. So yeah. I was just like, I'll just keep going down that rabbit hole of things that I, I, I love. Like I would list, I would drive in my car pizza delivery just listening to talk radio like i didn't have a cd player in my car it was just talk radio i don't want to listen to the radio because radio sucks you know wow. rather than listen to people talk anyways um so i just list stopped listening to music nobody was showing me anything cool and then a buddy of mine who uh linked me up with joey uh, in high school when or when joey entered high school our buddy jordan he jordan introduced me to a, f a friend of his uh, in a way that was hilarious that was like hey man write a song over this and I was like this is too cool to be Jordan's music like whose music is this so I sent him a song like in in like an hour uh, of me just yelling I was like he's gonna hate <laughs> this I'm like this will this will get him off my back you know he's like I fucking love this yeah. dude and he's like bro <laughs> I sent like, this no. to the guy who wrote it he loves it and I found out that the kid who wrote it or the guy who wrote it wrote it when he was 14. And I was like, bro, if you wrote that when you were 14, what are you writing now? Like, send me some stuff. Yeah. So he he sent me a few more songs and, and Dead American was just kind of birthed over the phone between like emails and nothing really like happened for a long time. We had five six songs demoed but we didn't record it or anything well, it was pretty what, organic what's the year yeah it was super organic this is 2016 okay maybe 2017 this is like the inception of like yeah I, I was i was still like kind of kind of messing around with music I, I would do patriot and patriot was just me and uh kyle rosa who is an insane drummer yep. i went to high school with he played in a tray you um we had this project that was kind of like more instrumental uh, or electronic and R and B ish. It was like white boy R and B, and I was so I was still doing music writing. I, I never stopped writing, but it was like I just stopped listening and caring about music. And then when then Chad entered, I started caring more about about it, but I didn't really care enough to like start a band. And then finally, he was like, "I'm just gonna do this." So what he, was the tipping point where you were like? What was What's the th what was the tipping point where you're like, all right, I'm gonna fucking do do this? Um, I With think I think once I think once we moved once I moved out of Utah, like I moved up to Utah for about eight nine months, um, and then I got fired from a job, and Chad was living up there, and he was like, I need to get out of Utah, and so moving to California was what did it. It was like, all right, cool. I got a friend in California. You guys dipped together, you and Chad did? Yeah. yeah. He's like, I got a friend wow. in California who needs a roommate, so we're all going to move in together. My, my brother's going to come, and it will be, you know, all five, uh, four of us living together. You know? Cool. So we moved out. You're like, dude, I lived we... with fucking 60s before. This is nothing. Uh, yeah. Dude, it, it, I just... I don't know. I, I'm so grateful that things have worked out the way that they have because it just didn't, uh, like, Chad allowed me just to be myself. I'm going to have to leave pretty soon here. I'm super sorry. I have a okay. baby appointment. Um, finding out baby? A lot, a lot today. Uh, so Chad Chad was really, put, like, a critical person in my life that, like, he allowed me the freedom and just kept saying yes. It was just like, yes, keep going. Yes, keep going. Yes, keep going. Just, that was what you needed important. right then. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, oh, cool. He, he writes dope stuff and he's he, he likes my ideas. Like, I want to keep working with this guy. So we we 
recorded The Shape of Punk is Dumb. And in like 2017, put it out in 2018. Fuck, was that six years End ago? End of 2018. Yeah. That was the first time I talked to him. Was he hit me up on yeah. Instagram? I was like, hey, dude, can you check out my album and like share it around? Because you yeah. were just going around to people like, hey, check Bro, this out. Like, I, what's, I'm, I'm doing a thing again. I was like, we'll talk what? about this afterwards. But what? Yeah. It's, it, it's it, amazing. It, it blew my mind the reaction that that got. And again, just yeah. one of those like, oh, okay, like maybe this is a realistic thing. You know, like maybe totally. this could be like a realistic thing again. And not that I like wanted to, but I I knew that with the people that we were connecting ourselves with at that time of like playing our first show and yeah. you know, like yeah, before yeah. we played our first show, we knew our booking agent and we knew that we were gonna sign to his label once his label was off of off the yes. ground. Like I knew that. You know, like it, it once we kind of like saw that end goal, we were like, oh, okay, cool, 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 cool. And then COVID. <laughs> yep. <laughs> no, we about, know about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What happened? Yeah, what happened? What happened? Hey, I'm going to take this wrench. I'm going to put it in your fucking bike spokes where you're going <laughs> 100 miles an hour. Yeah. yeah. It was, that was a fantastic time. But um, I don't know. I think through that time, um, A, I learned a lot about myself i learned a lot about um like what i was capable of and and even though it was like i wasn't able to necessarily do all of the things that i loved i was like optimistic for the first time in like a very long time considering that's beautiful right like yeah. it's you, you, everybody was super downtrodden and yeah like we were all broke as shit but totally. at the same time it was like all right we're all in this together and in my head i was just like you know what i'm just gonna take this time in the same way that i would have liked to yeah. have taken certain time and just kind of like assess and and like reset and see what what is out there because because nobody's able to do it yeah. when shit comes back like who know who knows what what can happen in this life you, you do know? the bows drawn back you're like all right yeah we're and, cocked in the i mean we're all shooting at the same target now you know and that that's how mm -hmm. I, that's how the I bar felt, is fucking you know like, yeah like like the there there the opportunities to do cool stuff became available you know like doing a even as cheesy as it is like doing doing like crossover merch with Seosin and dead american was like something that amazing that was super fun for me as as like the guy you know yeah. Where it was like I'm, I'm 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 able to kind of like rip on myself in a way that like i do rip on myself you know what i'm saying like, that's it fun just, yeah it's just, it was a good time so having fun and doing this again i think they saw me doing it i did scary kids and i think um when you know 20 year happened with this you know this past year um i think a lot of things were just kind of like realigning for us to be able to like chat it out in the way that needed to happen yeah and so those conversations like happen and I think it's a beautiful I think it's a beautiful story in, in the long run. Like we were all kind of able to step back out and look at it I think over COVID. Sure. A little bit more. Cause they put out that record yeah. before COVID mm -hmm. with Anthony. And I think being able to step out of it and not be able to do it, get it cut off, like we're able to kind of like see the bigger picture for what it is and understand that like nobody cares anymore right you know like nobody gives a shit anymore like we're too old to be dealing with this there's beauty in that though yeah. like yeah. not giving a fuck that's yeah. joey's mo yeah 100%. like it looks like got him dude like 100 yep. and, and again like i said at the beginning it's like if you more than me and i'm the way i'm at, at right now which is that same mentality mm -hmm. like who gives a shit you know, like I, I love Anthony as, as a human, like regardless of whether or not he's 
playing with Seo San mm. or Circa or Ellis Dunes or doing a solo thing. It's like, I just love that dude as an individual, you know? I want to see him successful, and I would say he would say the same thing 100% about me. 100% he would, for sure. You know? And, and so for all of us, it's like, I think we all kind of just want that for each other. And because of of that, like, Seosin doesn't, and it, like, it no longer feels like, oh, this is my band, you know? Like, it's our band. You know what I mean? Yes. Like, it's it's all of ours. Like, we we all did this together. It's everybody's pizza. Like, bro, this is the best pizza of 100%. all time because we share it together. It's yes. everybody's breakfast yeah. spaghetti, dude. 100%. <laughs> breakfast and, spaghetti is fire. And on that note, yeah, Cove, yeah. thank you so much for your time. No, thank you. I, I, uh, I've, I've had it. I don't really, I, I like to talk. But uh, we're glad you like thank to talk. You for talking at us. <laughs> we don't like to talk. Yeah. But uh, it it, I think people, again, maybe this started before we were talking. Like the mystery that surrounds Sh- Seosin is the like, lore. Yeah. And the lore is is so, is so cool. And I think to kind of like, allow people, kind of like an insight to, to it at all, is is needed in a time kind of like this where where you know yeah we don't again we don't use social media and so to be able to like be given this opportunity to talk yeah. to both of you disseminate is, is, some yeah yeah and to be able to show some information to people i think is is the coolest thing because it it just hasn't it doesn't happen with Seosin. and with my life i'm like i got dead american this year i got Seosin that came out, you know, today of recording. We got sleepers totally. translating live that just came out today. I got La Tired coming up on the first of every month. We got a song that's dropping. Like my life is this year n- not even knowing it. I like I planning this. It's just like it's the coolest the coolest thing to be able to like make make this reappearance with Seosin and do all of these fun shows singing that that record um and be able to play you know all of the songs that i got to play for the time that i was in the band and just share them with people who never got to see the band or maybe there's some like young kids of fans you know that never got to see us either and i think that that's like that us coming back and doing something like we we definitely would like i would definitely like the opportunity to to showcase this this 4.0 version of Seosin um to as many people that didn't get to see us play or me play yeah you know yeah. almost 20 years ago yeah. you know what i'm saying so um thank you on behalf fun. of all of the fans yeah. thank you so no, much bro thank you <laughs> thank you for doing this and and uh yeah this is this is fun Thanks for hanging, dude. Yeah. Thank you.